Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's K. I am in the SAB. Kim out of Savannah, Georgia. My sister's gonna come and finish up my hair later after she picks up my niece. Anyway, excuse the hair. It's not about me. It's not about me. Focus on the message, not the messenger. All right, but I don't want that one little part sticking up in the middle. Oh well. Oh well. All right. So listen, guys. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, it originally began as a Facebook Live. Uh, and if I occasionally shout out my Facebook watchers like Snoop Dizzle, then just bear with me, okay? <laughs> Alright, so I titled this on Facebook, you gotta be somewhat of a masochist in order to successfully do MLM. And here is what I mean. Now, for all the perverts who came on the line, just so that you know, <laughs> masochist, like that term doesn't refer to like sexual deviance only, okay? Um, if you look at masochist, it really is just anybody that finds pleasure in pain. Pleasure in pain. Oh, it's a pen. Okay, pleasure in pain. And here is why I say that. Um, I am the person that will tell you all of the things that other network marketers are scared to tell you. So, whereas other people will be like, oh, it'll be so great. It'll be so fun. You'll win trips. You'll go to convention and oh, you'll make all this money. You'll do this, you'll do that. And then they paint this rosy picture where everything is perfect and it's so good and it's so great. But the reality of the situation is your family is not going to understand you. Your friends probably are going to run from you or make fun of you. Um, strangers um, who don't know you won't like you. You're, you're really going to make a fool of yourself by doing a lot of the... Uh, network marketing no-nos in the beginning and so it is a very painful <laughs> it's a very painful experience in the beginning and um, for as long as you allow yourself to experience pain so you have to find pleasure in the pain you have to make yourself you have to train your brain you have to program your mind all the time to repurpose a situation or reframe an event, um, a conversation. Constantly you have to do this because it's gonna constantly happen to where somebody's like, you trying to tell me something? You trying this? You trying that? Okay, I'll pay on, I'll do it on Friday when I get paid. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, why are you doing that? You must really be desperate. This, that, and, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you from experience, it's not always fun until you really start to understand certain things. And you have to latch on to people whose belief you can borrow. So like for me, when I started, guys, there was this guy named Jose Ardon, okay? And Jose Ardon <laughs> was a buck oh five. Like seriously, I think Mr. Ardon could not have weighed more than 120 pounds um, at the time that I met him. But he had the presence of Andre the freaking giant, okay? Multi, multi millionaire many times over. He didn't even have a pair of shoes until he was eight years old. But I remember watching Mr. Ardon on stage and he was saying um, that when he first started in the industry, same thing I'm saying, like, he was just wondering why people were rejecting his offer. And he was baffled by it at first. And then he said, you know what? After a while, I was just like, okay, forget it. I want to, I want to um, be successful in this, so I'm gonna follow my mentor. He said, y de repente estaba invisible. And that basically means, and all of a sudden, I was invincible. And I remember sitting in the audience thinking to myself, ooh, I want to be invincible. <laughs> and he was like, and I remember him stumping his little foot, and he said, I, I became emotionally bulletproof. And I really liked that. I was like, emotionally bulletproof. Yeah, I want that. Because so many people jump on the emotional roller coaster of life all day long they're happy today they're sad tomorrow they're sad on monday they're happy tgif on friday um they're happy when their boyfriend gives them flowers then they're mad when they break up they're happy when their kids get straight a's and they're mad when they get a bad behavior report and it's just like up and down 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 and a lot of adults a lot of adults who should know better actually don't so they're constantly excuse me stressing their body out by being happy, sad, happy, sad, just destroying their frequency, their vibration by their lack of concentration, their lack of focus on what should be the most important thing. So when I heard that being invincible, being emotionally bulletproof, 
all of that appealed to me and I made a decision that no matter what, I was gonna be successful in network marketing. Now, I have friends that make fun of network marketers, like who wants to do three-way calls, who wants to do home-way parties, I mean home-way, <laughs> who wants to do home parties, I don't have time for that, I make money doing this and doing that, I can make this. And you know what? I never knock anybody's hustle. I don't do home parties personally, and I don't do that many three-way calls. Probably can count on my hand. There's one young lady on my team who um, does three-way calls regularly, but the majority of people don't. Um, and I don't do three-way calls with my sponsor. People that want to join me know they want to join me and they just join. Um, and yeah, I don't do the home parties, but again, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, Anytime you hear somebody knocking a thing, it's usually because they tried it and it didn't work for them or they have no clue what they're talking about. So I kind of laughed <laughs> when I saw a post the other day about somebody knocking MLMers because are there other ways to make money? Absolutely. This is why when someone wants to join me, I ask them, why do you want to join? If the only answer they have is money, I don't necessarily want them to join me because you can make money digging a ditch, right? You can make money doing anything. But for you to do MLM, like I said, you have to really have a heart for people. You have to be able to think about your client more than you can think about yourself. You have to want your team to win <laughs> at least as much as you want yourself to win. I, however, I really do get a high off of somebody on my team making money. I had a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with one of the better bodybuilders the, um, yesterday, and she told me she sold the kit right before the call, and I was just beyond ecstatic. So. You have to have a heart for people because truth be told, MLM is not the only way to make money. And it's definitely not the easiest depending on what you measure that by. I think it's the easiest in terms of the fact that it's a turnkey system. You already have a product. You already have, depending on what company you uh, joined, up, joined in, you already have a system in place. And all you have to do is build your influence. See, in all of those other businesses, like, guys, I'm telling you, if you don't learn how to develop leaders and help people find their voice and use their voice, that's what you do in network marketing. If somebody doesn't want to do that, then, yeah, you're going to be miserable because they're like, where my check? Where my check? My commission check this, my commission check that. But they're not working on themselves. I say it all the time. I work more on me than I do on selling this tea. And that's really the truth. So if somebody doesn't want to develop themselves, you're going to be miserable, they're going to be miserable, and they're, you're both going to be miserable until they quit. That's just how it works. However, this is the only thing I know of where somebody can come in with such a low investment. <clears throat> and if they join the right company and the right sponsor, they literally have access to so many resources. It's insane. They can find their voice, use their voice, build influence, and then take that influence somewhere else and leverage it over and 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 over again. I don't know too many other things that allow you to do that. So like my friends that do other things and they'll say, well, I don't want to talk to people. And that's fine. They're making killer money. That's awesome. But <clears throat> they don't want to develop anybody. For me, I am gratified when a single mom of special needs twins tell me that her commission check paid her gas bill, her car note. I am gratified when my business partner, who is a, past, a traveling pastor, who has a sick wife, who has a sick dad that he cares for, tells me that from the comfort of his home, using his smartphone, he's made eight car payments in a row. Oh no, you didn't call while I'm on my Facebook Live. <laughs> I am gratified when another mother tells me that within 24 hours, she made two sales to a complete stranger, totaling over $100 in commission, and literally, like, it was barely any effort on her own. That, to me, does something. So I'll take somebody who doesn't know me saying an ignorant comment, and it just, to me, it's laughable. It's like comedy. Like, half the stuff that used to piss me off when I first started, now it's like, <laughs> you're so funny. It doesn't even fail me. I mean, it fazes me. It doesn't faze me at all. Like, I am emotionally, emotionally unbothered. I am emotionally bulletproof. Yo estoy invisible ahora como Jose Ardon, right? Like my boy Jose Ardon, all right? I was like, I see you, Zay. I see you, Mr. Big Ardon. <laughs> 
But no, seriously, guys, I'm not going to tell you that MLM is the way for everybody because it's definitely not. I know a lot of people that have failed in it, and success is all relative. It's one person's success is another person's failure. But for me, I like the fact that it allows me a way to teach people how to come into their own. Like, I'm a totally different person right now than I was four years ago. Totally different. And I like having a vehicle where I can teach other people <coughs> how to get people to follow them on YouTube, reach out to them on YouTube, how to get complete strangers to trust them enough with something as delicate as a weight loss journey. And all of those things. I personally love that. Somebody else might not, and that's completely fine. But I'm not going to tell anybody not to knock it. You can do whatever you want to do. But for people out there that look at people who knock it and say, yeah, I don't want to do that either. I don't want to do that either. Well, then do, do you, boo. Do you. But just realize, I, I'm, I'm a part of a group, right? And it's, it's, I'm telling you, when you don't know who you are and you haven't found your voice yet, I know people that make six figures in their corporate job. Strong six, fig strong six figure incomes per year. They can't make a dollar on their own. Not one. <laughs> if they don't have the reputation of their company, if they don't have, you know, the strength of their employer, they can't make not one dollar on their own. And for me, the ability, the capability to make my own money on my own terms and to teach other people how to do the same, it's nothing like it. Because once you, once you can make one dollar, and that one of my mentors said this and I loved it, once you can make one dollar, all you have to do is learn how to scale, systematize, and repeat. Then you can make $100, $10, $10, $100, $1,000, million dollars. It's really just up to you. It's really just up to you. But literally, I'm a part of a group, y'all. And <laughs> people pay good money to be in this group. It's some very successful people in the corporate world in this group. And what we're taught to do, half of them can't do it. They have the information to make the money but they can't pull the trigger and actually go out there and complete the friggin' action steps. You know why? Because they don't know who they are and they haven't found their voice outside of the corporate umbrella. So meanwhile, back at the ranch, I'm sitting at home selling tea, <laughs> doing what our teacher teaches us to do. And I'm like, oh, just got another payment. And they're like, how did you do that? I'm like, I just did what she said to do. And they're like, I, I wanna do it too, but thank you. I want to do it too, but I'm scared. Scared? Scared of what? They're only scared because they haven't found their voice. Therefore, they don't know how to use it. So, again, MLM, and it's not even like, I'm not going to say it's for me forever. However, while I have my MLM business, <sighs> the ability to build um, like a group of people who trust you and know you and now ask you about other things, you can turn that into whatever you want to consulting training membership sites it doesn't even matter it's the, the possibilities are endless in this day and age so i tell my team the same thing like i'm not gonna be like you riding with me to you you know ride or die are you ride or die a better bodybuilder no man this is a vehicle take this vehicle and whether this is a short-term plan for you to get some quick money to leverage it into real estate or some other things i don't care that's none of my business but Take this vehicle and ride the devil out of it. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm at Eho Smooth, so I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.